Welcome to our worship of service and celebration on Palm Sunday here at the Little Home Church by the Wayside in Wayne, Illinois. How fun to see at the beginning of the service our children and adults in our Palm Sunday parade, which was filmed last week. And we'll get to see the uh, parade again at the end of the service. So thank you to everyone who participated in the parade. As we begin the observance of Holy Week, we want to acknowledge the celebration of Passover begins on March 27th. This year we will not have a Monday Thursday service, but we will have a Good Friday service. On April 2nd, we will release our Good Friday service, the seven last words of Christ. Join readers from our congregation and the Grammy-nominated Spectral Quartet for this powerful service of Haydn's The Seven Last Words of Christ. Take note that this particular service will only be available for viewing for one week, and then it will be removed from YouTube. For Easter on April 4th, we will celebrate with music for organ and brass with the North Side Brass Quartet, and Carly Sinclair will be singing. I will be speaking, and Reverend Jessica Skolton will lead us in an Easter Holy Communion. Thanks to Carissa and her outreach committee, which purchased a ton of Easter candy to be added to the food bags of our neighborhood food pantry for Easter this year. Mark your calendars. April 24th is the chili cook-off. Yes, this year we're having a chili cook-off in a different way. We have a celebrity chili cook-off. Celebrities like the police station, the fire department in Wayne, the Dunham Woods Riding Club, Townhouse Books and Cafe, 
and several other organizations will be cooking and donating chili. You will be able to pick up a box of chili with 10 containers of eight to 10 containers of chili from these various organizations for $25. And then you also still have the right to vote Chicago style for your favorite chili online as a fundraiser. We will have a limited supply, 100 boxes total. And when you consider that we have all these organizations participating and they'll be purchasing as well, we would want to be sure that you get your order in soon. So watch the church announcements for more information on the chili cook-off. Thanks to Mary for organizing this. Join us for Walk and Talk every Sunday morning. And I believe for Easter Sunday morning, we will take um, a, a break, a reprieve from our walk on Easter Sunday morning, but we'll resume again the very following Sunday, April 9th. This Monday, March 29th, is the fifth and final in the five-part Lenten series about worship and arts in the church. We will post it on YouTube on the 29th. You can watch it anytime. And if you want to join our lively Zoom conversations on Wednesday night, please do. Bible study is every Wednesday morning at 10 o'clock. Happy birthday wishes this week to Brooks, Tom, Anne, Kay, and Alex. The flowers today were provided by Pete and Kathy. We extend our sympathy to Kathy and her family on the death of their Uncle Lloyd. They also ask for prayers for their aunt, Uncle Lloyd's widow, as she recovers from COVID. Kathy and Tim still worship with us online, even though they've moved um, to another state. So again, our sympathies and condolences to you. We extend our sympathy to Carissa and her family on the death of her grandmother, Pearl, in Iowa. We want to hold up Linda's sister, Carol, and her friend, Bill. Continued prayers for Ruth in therapy at Greenfields. And finally, if you have any questions um, and need answers for something happening at the church, please visit our website or contact the church office. Again, keep us connected. Send in your pictures of your Easter celebrations and everything going on in your life um, through spring break and our Easter season. Thank you. Please join me in the call to worship. Come seeking words. Come to let your tongue give praise. Come to find your voice. Come to hear the response. Come to open your ears. Come to listen. Come to be healed by the silence. Come to stand together. Come to approach what words cannot describe. Come to find God. Please join me in the prayer of invocation. Come, come, O Holy One. Come through the streets. Come into the house. Come to find a space beside us at the table. Come to challenge our answers about why tragedy comes, why poverty increases, why we are afraid. Come, O Holy One. Speak to us in silence, with wisdom greater than ours, with love deeper than ours, with change wider than ours. Come, O Holy One, 
Fill in the stories with your wisdom, with your love, with your change, so that we might rely on your answers here and now. Amen. Please join me in the prayer of confession. O Holy One, we are too distressed to notice that you join us in the parade. We are too deeply grieved to be aware that you sit beside us at the table. We are too busy sighing. We are too busy talking. We have insisted upon our own answers. We have proclaimed our own knowledge about why bad things happen, about why the rich get richer, about why the world feels so broken. We have assured ourselves that this is the way things must be. But this life is in your hands. Our lives are in your hands. O Holy One, speak to us. Fill our silences. Comfort us with your love so that we may find your understanding. Trust us to find your answers when we finally tire from our own. Save us. O Holy One, with your steadfast love. Amen. Now, the assurance of pardon. God opens your ears. God speaks when you are silent. God approaches you in the parade and at table, in your denial and your praise, to be your help now and always. Amen. And now it's time for the children's sermon. Today we're going to read a book together, The Donkey That No One Could Ride. There once was a donkey, young, weak, and small, so weak he could carry nothing at all. Even when children sat on his hide, he'd wobble and tumble and fall on his side. No matter how much he tried or he cried, this was a donkey that no one could ride. He couldn't haul stones, he couldn't dig ditches, or carry rich men with their big bags of riches. He couldn't pull carts with huge bales of hay, just lifting a feather would make his legs sway. No. This donkey was useless, no good at all. Too puny, too shaky, too scrawny, too small. Now the donkey's owner was quite mean and tough. He said to the donkey, I've had enough. He pointed his finger and said with a huff, You can't lift a person, no matter how light. So take all your things and get out of my sight. Go away from here, donkey. Go away and just hide. What use is a donkey that no one could ride? So the donkey was led to the far edge of the town, pulled by his neck with his head hanging down. He was tied to a post on a small dusty road and left all alone where his tears overflowed. Left all alone and wondering why he was born to be weak and born to be shy, and born to be frightened, and born to cry. Just then, two men appeared alongside the post in the village where the donkey was tied. They came without warning on that fateful day. They came and untied him and took him away. The donkey was frightened. He said to the men, Where are we going? And then said again, Where are we going? And what about me? Please leave me alone and just let me be. Keep quiet, the men said. We mean you no harm. Just follow us quickly, no cause for alarm. They walked on for miles and miles until they got to a town at the foot of a hill. At the foot of the hill stood a man tall and thin, wearing a cloak and a beard on his chin. He had eyes that seemed sad and longish, dark hair, and a soft, gentle voice that floated on air. He said to the donkey, 
It's time that you knew about the great thing that you're destined to do. You'll carry me into the city, we too. Into the city, I'll ride atop you. What's that you say? cried the donkey with dread. There's simply no way you've been misled. I'm just a weakling. You must go ahead and look for another to take you instead. You see, I'm just hopeless. Ever since I was born, I've been subject to insults and teasing and scorn. My back's somewhat crooked. My legs aren't strong. I'm just a big failure who does everything wrong. Won't you believe me? The sad donkey cried. Just leave me alone and cast me aside. I'm just a poor donkey that no one can ride. The man looked at him with a face that was wise, with a warm, tender smile and love in his eyes. And then in a calm and mysterious way, he opened his mouth and started to say, My help is enough. It's all that you need. It's all you require in life to succeed. The weaker you are, the more strength I give. I'll be there to help you as long as you live. I know you feel tired and frightened and broken. But do you believe these words that I've spoken? Do you believe, I ask you again, do you have faith I can heal you, my friend? For some reason, the donkey was sure that he knew the words the man spoke were honest and true. They were said with such kindness and caring and love. It seemed that they came from heaven above. The donkey burst out. I believe that it's true. I believe, he repeated. I believe, yes, I do. The man stretched his hand out and closed both his eyes. And then, to the donkey's surprise, he felt a sensation he couldn't control from the top of his head right down to his soul. All of a sudden, he realized that now his body was stretching and changing somehow. Most amazing of all, at that very hour, the donkey began to sense he had power. He didn't feel small or weak any longer. Instead, he felt stronger and stronger and stronger. He could feel in his body the energy flowing. He could see with his eyes that his muscles were growing. His back felt like iron. His legs felt like steel. His chest felt so strong, it just couldn't be real. It's a miracle. It's a miracle, the donkey cried out. A miracle, a miracle beyond any doubt. In order to show all the thanks that he felt, the donkey bowed his head down and knelt in front of the man who had made him so strong with a beard on his chin and hair that was long. The man looked upon him with sorrowful eyes, then sat on his back and told him to rise. We're bound for that city that's west of the hill. I have a great mission I need to fulfill. The donkey got up. His tears had all dried. With big bulging muscles, he started to stride. No longer a donkey that no one could ride. Now he had courage and power and pride. He started to stride. He started to run. He couldn't believe he was having such fun. With a clippity-clop and a clippity-clop, he kept right on going with no need to stop. But as they drew near to the gate of the town, the donkey could hear a very strange sound. The curious noise made him perk up his ears. What could it be? It sounded like cheers. Soon crowds of people came into sight, shouting and waving their arms with delight. They were cheering the man and giving him praise, yelling hosannas and crying, hoorays. It was amazing to see the love they expressed. They called him a prophet 
and said he was blessed. In front of the donkey, they threw with their arms flowers and garments and branches and palms. They laid all these down and started to sing, calling the man a savior and king. The donkey was happy. Gone were his tears. Never had people sung in his ears. Never was there a moment so sweet as carrying a king with palms at his feet. And all his life after, the donkey rejoiced that the king had made such a wonderful choice to help with the greatest mission of all. The king used a donkey, young, weak, and small. So every year at Easter time, renew your hopes again. Remember how a little faith can give you strength, and then gather all your friends around and the, tell the tale of when a tiny donkey carried God into Jerusalem. The end. Let's put our hands together and I'll say the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. This is the time in our worship service where we actively and intentionally take part in the support of the ministry of Christ. If you are a member of the Little Home Church, we encourage you to continue your pledges and financial support. And if you are visiting with us today, we welcome your gifts as well. You may donate by Vimo, PayPal, or by sending a check into the church office through the mail. The information is on the screen. When you have no words, when you cannot find your voice, God approaches. Let us reach out to our God. Let us give our gifts. Dedication of the offering. O Holy One, bless these gifts so that the world may know your love, even when we are silent. Amen. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His steadfast love endures forever. Let Israel say, his steadfast love endures forever. Open to me the gates of righteousness, that I may enter through them and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. The righteous shall enter through it. I thank you that you have answered me and have become my salvation. The stone that the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Save us, we beseech you, O Lord, O Lord, we beseech you. Give us success. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. 
The Lord is God, and he has given us light. Bind the festal procession with branches up to the horns of the altar. You are my God, and I will give thanks to you. You are my God, I will extol you. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. Now the reading from the New Testament, Mark 11, verses 1 through 11. When they were approaching Jerusalem at Bethphage and Bethany near the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately as you enter it, you will find tied there a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it. If anyone says to you, why are you doing this? Just say this, the Lord needs it and it will send it back here immediately. They went away and found a colt tied near a door outside in the street. As they were untying it, some of the bystanders said to them, what are you doing untying the colt? They told them what Jesus had said and they allowed them to take it. Then they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks on it, and he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, and others spread leafy branches they had cut in the fields. Then those who went ahead and those who followed were shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our ancestor David. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Then he entered Jerusalem and went into the temple. And when he had looked around at everything, as it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. In our announcements for church over the last month, we have been asking for people to send in their thoughts and on the blessings of this last year being in a pandemic year. Granted, there have been a lot of hardships, but we've also um, come out on top on some things, and we've had some marvelous responses. So for the sermon this morning, I'm going to read to you those responses. Then we're going to be able to um, have a moment where we have a video as well to celebrate some of our church history and past, and I'll wrap it up with some closing comments at the end. So here we go. Last year, Dave and I were once again able to travel to Chile during February and part of March. We returned on March 10th to a world that was turning upside down. Nothing was the same as we entered a strange, unfamiliar world. To make matters even more disorienting, our pastor announced that he would be leaving soon. At a time when we needed the comforting presence of our church family, we were unable to meet, worship together, or have the reassurance of stable pastoral leadership. All conditions were ripe for the little church to enter a very dark time. However, a year later, I think that instead of a collapse, our church has thrived. A distinguishing feature of Little Home Church has always been very strong lay leadership, and during the pandemic, members new and old became innovative. We found new ways to worship, to connect with each other, to reach out and serve the community, and to continue to learn and grow. Staff members Larry Diefenbach and Lori Prey have worked tirelessly to provide stability and inspiration. I'd specifically like to talk about Bible study. Thankfully, Reverend Ron Purser agreed to ably lead that group and eight or nine members have continued to meet, share fellowship, and study the Bible every Wednesday morning via Zoom. One thing that I find especially impressive during this time of COVID and Zoom is that two members of Little Home Church who have moved away are faithful members of this group. One from Maine, Maureen, and one from North Carolina, Kathy. Would these two have remained active Little Home Church participants without the coronavirus and the advent of the Zoom. While we all long for the day when we can again worship together, join in fellowship, 
and lift our voices in song, the Little Home Church can be proud that as a congregation, we have not only survived during the pandemic, but we've thrived. We have many, many bright days ahead. From Maryland. Now, from Nancy and Rick. The first blessing is that Little Home Church went YouTube. And while we missed the live service and the choir, special musical performances, it was a touching Christmas pageant. Thank you, Frank and Jean, for your use of your barn. I do enjoy having a cup of coffee while watching the service sitting on the sofa. We are joyful that Jessica and Alex moved out of an apartment after the riots in downtown and are only 30 minutes north of us now. Joyful, the much needed repairs are completed on the sanctuary, and yes, no shutters are architecturally accurate, but I do miss the charm of the black shutters. Nancy and Rick. From Susie, what a blessing to be part of our church family. When many churches felt the strain of maneuvering the pandemic, Little Home Church found ways to keep us all connected, revitalize our ministries, continue our mission within the community, balance our budget, and made us stronger. Next, I'm very thankful that after a stem cell transplant in August, Jeff's cancer is in remission. He has been vaccinated for COVID and continues to receive other vaccines to boost his immune system. I am also thankful for the many outdoor adventures that I experienced with friends and family. Discovering new places to enjoy nature with the people I love has been a blessing. Although Greg's wedding was postponed due to COVID, we look forward to his marriage to Samantha on May 1st. So excited as they begin the next chapter of their lives together from Penn. From Lori, the last 12 months has been challenging to say the least and yet filled with so much joy and so many blessings. Zoom, what a blessing in the way it has kept us connected with our faraway family members and our little home church family. I am thankful for our younger generation and their technology expertise to get our worship services filmed, edited, and up on YouTube each week. I also feel blessed for a wonderful, loving, and dedicated lay leadership at Little Home Church, as well as committed and faithful membership. This year has made us a stronger church as we worked hard to stay connected with one another. Our church members have been so supportive as we've had to step out of our normal comfort zones and try new things in a new and different way. You have embraced that. I am grateful for the joy and blessing that we call Larry. What a delight to have such a dedicated person to work with. Take that COVID, we win. From Anne. I, from Carol. During this past year, we at Little Home Church have been challenged, yet we have met the COVID challenges with many successes. I am grateful, and we have survived with flying colors, with God's help, and the true dedication of our congregation. Unusual for Little Home Church? No, it is not. Upon researching and organizing our archives during the last several months, it was apparent Little Home Church has had numerous difficulties in the past 150 years. Many times we were unable to balance the budget. The aftermath of two world wars put a strain on the congregation. The renovation and needed repairs throughout the years became apparent and badly needed attention. The list goes on and on. But the single thread that became quite evident over the last 150 years was the dedication of the congregation and the strong lay leadership Little Home Church has always had. Members carried us through those tough times, and yes, our lay leadership once again rose to the occasion and carried us through this latest pandemic. Thank you, members of the Little Home Church, for stepping up and giving us all something in which we can be grateful. This has been a blessing over the last 12 months. Let us rejoice. Now, from A, resilience, flexibility, creativity, appreciation for relationships and friendships, appreciation for technology, empathy for people trying to lead us in challenging, unprecedented, difficult, unpredictable times, 
Joy for the several months of living under the same roof with my adult children. Joy to be able to go outside in my neighborhood and experience nature whenever I wanted to. These are among the thoughts that come first to mind. It is almost hard to remember how church was for my 60 plus years of life before 2020. That said, as I reminisce about the 12 months just gone by, I do count my blessings. The fact that we have been able to continue with worship, albeit in a very different manner. Watching services online has enabled me to pay deeper attention to what is said and to repeat what is said or pause for contemplation. Also, the convenience of being able to experience church on my own time has been great for its flexibility. Another joy that comes to mind is that in the Zoom church, meetings have gone on now for over a year. For me, for the Joyful Campaign team, Sisters in Spirit, and Outreach. It has allowed for interaction despite a prohibition on most in-person interaction. Having church leaders who are willing and committed to progress Perseverance and excellence has also been a joy. I think we've just gone forward with a can-do spirit in a lot of ways, and that reaffirms the strength and competence and love of our congregation. We've been able to explore and provide new ways of worshiping while offering new events and maintaining annual events despite the public health concerns and related restrictions placed on our society. And I would be remiss if I fail to say that a great joy of mine is that we are able to accomplish phase one of our joyful restoration project and to begin phase two. And through the 12 months, the congregation, the community, and the campaign team have remained committed, interested, supportive, and enthusiastic. I know we're not supposed to say hallelujah during Lent, so I will say hallelujah instead. From Anne. One final comment from Mary Jean. Because we were isolated, we learned to do more by doing less. We also realized that because of the isolation, the peripheral conversations of squabbles in the neighborhood never entered our consciousness. Last month, we saw Catherine and Dave Karwowski on video talking about the launch of our 150th celebration year here at the Little Home Church by the Wayside. Today, thanks to the Karwowski family, and especially Alex, we begin a video journey for thoughts and remembrances about our church. We also see the debut of our 150th anniversary logo, which was artfully and skillfully designed by Kathleen Casca. We are so grateful to all of you for making this happen. Let's listen to an interview now with Jane Shelton, her mom, Mary Jean Schles, and Barbara Lyon about some of the things that have happened in the church in past years. Enjoy. Hi, everyone. I'm Jane Shelton. With me is Barbara Lyon and my mother, Mary Jean Schles. Hello. And um, today we're, we're here to talk about the women's leadership in the church. And both my mom and Barbara were leaders in our church at different times. And so that's, we're just going to have a conversation about that. I think women's fellowship in the years that I remember was a lot more social than it had been when I first got involved. Mm -hmm. And so you guys, well, you younger guys women the, were coming in too. Yeah, yeah, right. You brought the party. We, you know, yeah. right. <laughs> and we also started Flag Day, which is still in. Oh, oh no. you did business. You did. Barbara no, brought Women's wow. Fellowship did that. And, uh, I didn't it was, know, but it was. Uh, Barbara brought, brought it the from idea. Ohio. She invented I, Flag Day? I yeah. did. Oh, yeah. In, in uh, Wayne, I did. Oh. It was like a um, uh, Norman Rockwell uh, yeah. event. It just looked just like a Norman Rockwell picture coming down. Army Trail Road with the marching band. Yes. And it was really oh, I remember the Flag Day wonderful. parades. It was, um, you know, I that's what I thought a parade was. Yeah, yeah. that was. I, mean, I remember seeing the Macy's Day Parade on TV, and 
you know, that just was like, like, no, that's not, that's, that's I mean, I know what, that's not a parade. That's something else. I don't know what it is. <laughs> right. But, that's oh, so that's the, the flag day, which lives on to this very day. 50 right. years later or yeah. more, 1968, I believe that began. Yeah, yeah. that's fantastic. Yeah. A couple of things that were are also memorable about this church was um, uh, when we had the sesquicentennial oh, in yeah. the church, yeah. Um, yeah. and that became a community affair. And then we had the bicentennial of the country. Am I getting those backwards? No, no, you're right. We had the we we were coming up on the sesquicentennial of the church. It was the sesquicentennial of Wayne. In oh, 1984, right. okay. and, and then the bicentennial in 1976. And country, those yeah. were, they were, yeah. the church had a big part yeah. in those celebrations. Yeah. And uh, people really gathered. And it, so, and in fact, I think that's a, my what I felt my role was as far as church was community um, activity, community um Involvement. Yeah, and absolutely. I, uh, I felt Wayne was absolutely the perfect place for a, a church to really make a statement. And, you know, the other thing about the little home churches, I mean, it's not like we're all serious. I mean, it's, there's a, we have a lot of fun together and we oh, have yeah. a lot of laughs together. Yes, yes. And I, th that just somehow, I don't know what this brought to mind that story about dad teaching Sunday school and his coat catching on fire. <laughs> the children oh, trying to warn him. And the kids no, are sitting no. there and he's just like, you know, trying to get his point across, whatever it was. In the meantime, his <laughs> coat is smoking. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was it. See, those rituals were what's always that in early times or in our times, you lighted the candles and you had this right. little prayer to be in this, the, your time with the children Bob did all the lighting up he got ready to go and then backed into it the church yeah, I think was able to gather volunteers um, they seem to be the catalyst for jumping in and helping mm -hmm. out mm -hmm. the, uh, the maybe it's just the church people that's the way they were or was it the body of the church that Cause that it, but it was it's definitely church that um, it that um, helped put festivities together and festivals together and celebrations together. It was um, a very much of an impact on the community for a very long time. That yeah, I think that's mm -hmm. very true, and and I'm glad that it's still you know we're coming up to our 150th anniversary. The church looks great, and um, there's a lot of enthusiasm for going forward. So I just um, let's hope that it does the groundwork that you two laid and that I hoped mm -hmm. to, you know, build upon, will go for another 150 years. Well, the church is now looking beautiful. It it's does. ready for it's 150 years. Ready. It's ready years. for us. Mm -hmm. It's ready to celebrate mm -hmm. as soon as we can all do so. Um, you know, health. You know, whatever without a pandemic. Um, oh, and speaking of which, these two have been vaccinated. So that's, <laughs> but we have, have a mask yes. as well. Oh. Yeah, so uh, we're being careful. Anyway, um, all right. Well, I want to thank you guys both. And I don't know how this will no, play at the end. But thank but, you for so. doing this. Yeah. Thank you, Jane, Mary Jean, and Barbara for sharing those remembrances with us and everyone else who sent in statements of gratitude. I would encourage you at this point to send this video out to possibly former members who live in other parts of the country who would really love to see Mary Jean and Barbara on camera and may also be able to send in some of their videos and remembrances of their time here at the Little Home Church as we continue on to prepare for our 150th anniversary celebration in October of this year. I'd like to close with this. Reverend Cheryl Lindsay reminds us in her weekly UCC sermon that Hosanna means please save us or save us now. Over the past year, as a church, as a community, 
as a nation, and as the world. We have made that cry many times as we have dealt with the pandemic. We're saved on a daily basis from so many of the worries and struggles of this world and, that pan and the pandemic. And we want to remember and never forget those families who have lost over half a billion parents, grandparents, sisters, brothers, and friends to COVID-19. The place that I'm standing in right now, and that you will be standing in again, when the time is right and safe, for all of us has been here for 150 years. This is the building, but we are the church. We have been here for 150 years too, standing with our ancestors and standing strong because we have a relationship with each other, with that great cloud of witnesses, and with God through the teachings of the Bible and the church. They teach us to ask for help whenever we need it and to offer help whenever we can get it. That's what we are all about. Hosanna. Please join me in a Palm Sunday prayer. Almighty God, we are continually amazed at the way you turn the world upside down. For Savior of the world, we would have chosen a powerful prince, but you chose a carpenter's son, born under questionable circumstances. For disciples to help Jesus through his ministry, we would have chosen well-connected, wealthy people of the upper class to bankroll the operation. But you chose fishermen, tax collector, and other such outcasts. For a grand entrance into Jerusalem, we would have chosen a white stallion. But you chose a donkey. When riding high in the poles on Palm Sunday, we would have chosen to stay there as long as we could but you chose to clear the temple. For a place of coronation, we would have chosen a palace with a wonderfully decorated royal throne, but you chose a cross. For those who would want to have included, that we would have wanted to have included in the kingdom of God, we would have chosen those who look and sound like we do, but you chose the world for people to share the love and grace extended to us in Christ, we would have chosen somebody else. But you chose each of us. Thank you for choosing us. Help us to be more like you in all that we say and do. Amen. Receive the benediction. And so it begins. We walk through this week from palms now to passion. It is Jesus we seek each moment as we walk through these days. It is time to see people the way Jesus sees us. To watch for the ones who need hope, who need kindness. Seeking the light, not the darkness that blinds us. As you walk through these days, May the love you now know be spread to each person you meet on the way, so that the God in you, the divine image to which you are made, will see the God in me, 
and all of the wonderful souls who walk on our paths this week. Peace. Amen.